Welcome to the manor. In this world, we wanted to have footsteps similar to the ones you may have experienced in Murder Village. And so if I walk around, you'll start hearing the footsteps. And I've pasted out, so there's eight footsteps if I run here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. And then if I walk leisurely, it should be about eight to ten. It's closer to eight. And then if we sneak, which is just walking really slow, we should get zero. Oh, I got one. Gotta go slower. A little slower. And when you sneak, it is possible if you go too fast, so you gotta really pace yourself. We have really improved upon this script since Murder Village, so I'm really excited to show you how it works. But first, let's take a look at the objects. Here you'll notice that we're using a heads-up display, and if you haven't seen our heads-up display video, there's a link right here, and I'll keep it in the description for you as well. And then you'll note we have the time, how many players are infected versus not, and then we have the audio block. And so this is all grouped into the heads-up display. You could also put this on a wearable, so if you didn't want to have to script a heads-up display, just make an attachable head, and you put the sound effect inside of that grouping. On the audio block, we're running the player audio script. And let's start by taking a look at the variables. Under our variables, we have the previous position, which is a vector variable. This allows us to track how far the player is moving per iteration. Then we have our speed, which is the number that we're going to be using. Then we have floor creak, breathing, and footsteps. These are object variables that are the sounds. Uh, we actually don't need any of these because we're going to be running this on the audio block itself, but I have these here just in case I need them in the future. If you click on the gear icon, you'll see that this script is locally scripted. There's a couple things in here we're doing because this is local, but if yours isn't, no worries. So go ahead and click save. You can also tell if your script's local from down here in the bottom left where it says script mode local. And then when world is started, we're sending the loop event to self after one second. This is just so that the event has time to be assigned to the player. You could also do this if you didn't expect your player to be picking it up. Otherwise, you send event to object with no delay. Then when loop is received, we're going to check to see if this object is owned by a player. Again, this is another local scripting thing, but basically we just nest all of our events inside of this if statement that says if owner of self doesn't equal server player, you can find server player under the values tab. But again, if you're not locally scripting, just ignore this bit. The next thing you'll see is we're setting the speed number variable to be speed plus the distance from the previous position to the current position of self. And so what we've done here is calculate how far has the audio object itself moved. And since it's grouped into the player object, we know that it's moving with the player. Then to add a little bit of random, we use if random integer between zero and 100 is less than 10, this means there's a 10 and 100 chance, we will set the speed to be speed plus 0.5. This allows us to add just a little bit of random to our footsteps like a papa, which just basically makes it a little more organic. Then the next thing we do is say, if the distance from the previous position to the position of self is less than 0.2. So you'll note this is the same distance operation we did at the beginning. So we're calculating the current distance moved and we're gonna say if it's less than 0.2 meters, meaning they have just moving really slowly, we're gonna set the speed to zero. So we're not gonna inflict anything. This allows us to create sneak. So the lower this number, the more slow you have to sneak. And so we've set it to 0 0.2. 0 0.1 was also pretty good, but I just wanted to make it easier to sneak. So I went up to 0 0.2. Then if the speed is greater than 1.2, we will play the sound on the footsteps, set the speed back to zero, and then we set the previous position to position of self and send loop to self with a 0.1 second delay. And so this goes off 10 times per second. If you want to lower the rate of the footsteps to make it less often, you can increase this number because whenever this number is hit or greater than, that is when we make the footstep go off. So if you want it to be less often, so when you're running, it maybe it paces it a little bit slower, you can increase this number to say two or even 2.5. Those are good numbers in my opinion, but really we're just finessing these numbers to get them where we'd like them. And with that, I'd like to show you one more really cool trick that we can easily add in here. If we grab the if code block here, this is gonna grab including the set below. Now we're gonna bring this down and right here after we've played this sound on the footstep, we're gonna duplicate it by pressing our joystick to the left. And when we duplicate and then let go, it returns this if back to where it was. Now we'll see that if random integer between zero and 100 is less than 10. So this is that same one we were doing before. Now this is way too frequent. I mean, this thing's going off, uh, let's, let's see, 10 times per second. So this is a 10%, like this will happen once per second, right? That's crazy. So what we're gonna do is lower this. And now this will happen once every 10 seconds. And even that is still too frequent. So I wanna take this and make it once every 30 seconds or so. So we're gonna take this number and change it to 300. 
So now it's a one and 300 chance. <laughs> so only when this number rolls a zero, will this go off. It's important to note though, that when we're using random integer between that, the top number is not used. So it's actually going to be a number between zero and two nine nine, but because it's counting zero, that means this actually is a total of 300 values. And this making it less than one means that it's only going off if it is zero. So with that said, we don't wanna set speed. What we wanna do is actually play another sound. So we're gonna grab this play sound code block and drop it in here by duplicating it to the right again. Now we've got play sound on footsteps, but that's not what we wanna do. We wanna head back to our variables tab and we're gonna add the floor creek script. So we're gonna drop that in here. And now once every 30 seconds, the floor will creak. And because I think this 30 second parameter is pretty good, I'm actually gonna duplicate this one more time and we're gonna change this one to be the breathing sound. Because these are going to be happening randomly and not very frequent, I won't be putting them inside of the heads up display. So instead, we're gonna to need to move the sound block into position, but that's not very difficult. Go to our motion tab, grab move to, drop that into both of these right above the sound. But we're not moving self, so we'll take floor creek and duplicate it up as well as breathing. Awesome, we're not moving to a vector position. Well, we are moving to a vector position, but not that one. And so what we're gonna do is go to our operators tab, scroll down to position of player. Here we go, position of player. Now we can get the position of the player and for the floor creek, we want this to happen at the player's foot. Perfect. And then for the breathing, we want this to happen at the player's mouth. So we'll put this on their head. And then to get our player, because this is locally scripted, we can get the owner of self. So if we go to our actions tab and scroll down, you'll see player. We'll then see owner of object, duplicate that into both slots. And this is self. So we'll go to our values tab to grab self. And now if you don't have the audio block connected, say it's inside of an attachable object, well, the attachable object will be owned by the player who is wearing it. So in that case, you could create a new object variable similar to these sound variables, but for the grouped object that is the attachable, when the player is wearing that attachable, they're the owner, and that's how you can get the owner of that attachable. Awesome. And then one other cool trick is if someone is just grabbing an item, the same thing is true there. If they pick up a ball or they're holding onto an object, you can also use that to get owner of self of that object, which is a great way to get player information without having to save a player ID. And for our breathing sound, we're going to pull out the sound recorder gizmo and we're going to record our own breathing sound. It's going to be amazing. There we go. So it's going to sound like we're catching our breath. I'm going to lower the volume a bit. I'm going to increase the pitch a little bit and let's play it back. <sighs> that is so creepy. Oh my gosh, I love it. So then we're going to take our maximum distance down to about uh, 15, maybe even 20 meters. We're just going to give it a little bit of distance there so people are a little freaked out. More sounds equals more scary. Woohoo. Okay, so we've got these. Now that we have these ready to go, Oh, door creak, right. We gotta go and adjust the distance on our door creak. We'll go change that down to about 20 as well. Lower the volume, play it back for... <laughs> it's so good. Yeah, so you know, just make these exactly how you want them. Don't like over worry about it, but there we go. We've got our two sounds. Now we'll go open up our heads up display. We need to zoom in, open up the properties panel on our sound effect. We can then zoom out. And then down here, we're going to attach these sounds. I'm gonna bring these up to the property panel. If you grab on this top little bit here with your Raycast, you can actually increase the size, which is super duper useful. Then we're gonna go sound recorder down for the breathing sound. And we need to open up this properties panel again, large door creak. There we go. So we've got all of our sounds mixed in. Let's go and try it out. Whew, I'm a little nervous. I think just standing still can actually cause these to go off. So we're gonna walk around. There's the footsteps, nice. Like, I'm a little horrified. Oh, stop. <gasps> oh, there it was. Oh, that was so good. Oh, and it went off again twice in a row. Oh, that's so cool. Like, I wasn't expecting it to go off that frequent, but like, there's a chance it could not even go off for an entire game for someone, but there's also the chance that it could happen two times in a row just like that. And we haven't even heard the breath yet, so like, I guess we'll just keep waiting and see if we hear the breath. That is so intense. The first time people hear that's gonna freak people out. The second time, not so much, but oh my gosh, that was amazing. If you
you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. And I look forward to seeing you in Horizon. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye.